a case of exorcism of an evil spirit in our own days. Account of the Miracle by St. John of Shanghai in San Francisco. Here we print an account of the healing of a demon-possessed man in Shanghai by our man of prayer, Vladika John, in the years when he was Bishop of Shanghai, 1934 to 1949. Once I came to the cemetery to pray at the grave of my mother, I stood reflecting, which is better, to live or to die? Suddenly I heard a man's voice, Good morning! I shuddered from the unexpectedness of it. This man asked me who was buried here. I replied that it was my mother. He continued the conversation, That is normal, that your mother lies here. But for me it is my son who lies here. He was young, under thirty years old, and I rejoice that he has already died. I was thunderstruck, hearing what he said, and of course I asked, But why do you rejoice? He replied that he rejoiced because his son was healed before his death from demonic possession, and, thanks to Vladika John, he died a true Christian. I asked him, You mean that your son had a nervous ailment? No. My son was possessed. He hated everything holy. All holy icons and crosses he tore up into the tiniest pieces and very much rejoiced over this. I would bring him to Vladika John, and he made him stand on his knees and put on his head sometimes the cross, and sometimes the gospel. My son would be very sad after this, and sometimes he would run out of the cathedral. But Vladika told me not to despair. He would continue to pray for him, and in time he would recover. But for the time being, let him continue to be treated by doctors. And do not take it so hard, he said. The Lord is not without mercy. Thus it dragged on for several years, he related. The son was taken to Minchon, a home for the psychologically ill, and sometimes he was let out to go home, and then his father would again lead him to the cathedral. Sometimes he was given Holy Communion, when his father would see that he was in such a state that he would not run out of the church immediately after receiving Communion in order to spit it out. Just as before, he would tear up crosses and icons, but he became somehow calmer, and he began to read the Gospel. The father understood that the prayers of Vladika John had reached God. He was home one time, lying in bed and reading the Gospel. His face was so bright and joyful. And he said, You know, Papa, we have to be in Minchon. I have to go there. There, the Spirit of God will cleanse me from the spirit of evil and darkness, and then I will depart to the Lord. Let's go quickly and make the arrangements. The father immediately went to all the offices and insisted that his son be accepted, since earlier they had told him that his son was not dangerous for people around him and he could be kept at home. He was helped in everything by the immigrant committee and by a Chinese doctor whose wife had helped Russians a great deal and had even adopted a Russian child. They brought him to Minchon, 25 or 30 miles from Shanghai. In two days, the father came to visit him and saw that his son was absolutely impossible. He was restless, constantly moving on his bed, and then he suddenly began to shout, Don't do it! Don't come near me! I don't want you! The father looked, looked, and went into the corridor to look some more, to see who was coming and where, who it was that had disturbed the spirit of evil that was in his son. The corridor was long and looked out on an alley. There he saw an automobile, and from it Vladika John had come out and was heading for the hospital. The father went into the ward again and saw that his son was writhing on the bed and shouting, Don't come near! I don't want you! Go away! Go away! Then he became calm and began quietly to pray, whispering the prayers. The father likewise began to pray. At this time he heard a door open and close somewhere and he heard steps in the corridor. The sick man jumped up from bed and ran along the corridor in his pajamas. 
meeting Vladika, he fell down before him on his knees and wept, begging him to chase out of him the spirit of evil. Vladika laid his hands on his head and read prayers. Then he took him by the shoulders and led him into the ward, where he also laid him on the bed and prayed over him. Then he gave him holy communion. When Vladika had left, the sick man said, Well, now at last my healing has been accomplished, and now the Lord will take me to himself. Papa, take me quickly. I must die at home. When the father brought him home, he was so happy to see everything in his own room, and especially the icons, and he began to pray and took the gospel. The next day he began to hurry his father to call a priest quickly to give him Holy Communion once more. The father said he had just received communion the day before, but the son objected and said, Papa, quickly, quickly, or you won't be in time. The father called a priest. The priest came and gave the son communion once more. And while the father accompanied the priest, Father Sergius Borodin, to the stairway and returned, his son's face had already changed and become somehow old. Again he smiled to him, but already without movement, and only his eyes, as it were said, Papa, farewell, how good it is. I asked, who had made such a splendid memorial for his son? He replied that it was the Chan family, Chinese people, who were his good friends and very kind people. Later I became acquainted with these Chinese people, and they confirmed all of this for me. Maria Y. Bishop Sava of Edmonton writes, This incident is very interesting. It sometimes happens that evil spirits are the instruments of God's wrath, and God allows them to cause suffering to people for their sins, so that at least through suffering they might come to self-awareness, repent of their sins, and be corrected. In the prologue, Lives and Sayings of Saints, under September 1st, we read the following story. Once a certain priest was sitting in the church porch and reading the Holy Gospel. While reading, Suddenly he felt as if some kind of dark and ominous cloud had surrounded him, and at the same time the light was extinguished in his eyes and his mind was darkened, and he was paralyzed in all his members and became dumb. And he remained in this frightful affliction for nine years and suffered so much that lying on his bed, he could not turn from side to side without someone's help. Meanwhile, it happened that finally his relatives, having heard of the miracles which St. Simeon the Stylite was performing, took the priest and carried him to the saint. And when they had not quite reached the monastery in which Simeon was living and had laid down to rest, at this time it was revealed from above to the saint, who was standing at prayer, concerning the affliction of the priest and that he was approaching. Then the saint called one of his disciples, gave him holy water, and said, Take this water, and hasten quickly out of the monastery. Near it you will find a sick priest being carried on a bed. Sprinkle him with holy water, and tell him the following. Sinful Simeon tells you, In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, arise and leave your bed and come to Simeon yourself. The disciple went and did as the saint had indicated to him. The priest immediately became well, came to the saint and fell at his feet. Simeon said to him, Arise, and do not fear. Even if the devil has brought sorrow upon you for nine years, still God's love for mankind did not forget you and did not allow you to perish utterly. Know also that the devil was allowed to offend you because you stood in the holy altar without fear and without reverence. Because you listened to slanderers and those who were slandered by them, you deprived of holy communion without seeking out the truth. Thereby you sorrowed God, and greatly rejoiced the devil, under whose dark power you thus fell. But now, seeing that God's love for mankind and his mercies have been multiplied in you, release those whom you saddened by excommunication, and just as God has had mercy on you, do you likewise to them. After these words the priest departed from the saint with great joy, and fulfilled all that he had commanded him. 
And so, at that time, there was St. Simeon the Stylite, and now Vladika John. That was in ancient times, but now it is in our own day. The power of God, just as through the Holy Stylite, so now also through Vladika John, has acted and exercised the evil spirit of the torturer. Wondrous is God in his saints, the God of Israel.